Good evening and welcome to Can TV 21 Hotline. Let's talk etiquette. Uh, that word just does something to me each and every time I say it. Etiquette. Some people say etiquette. But that's okay. When I hear them say etiquette, it's fine. I, I know that they are trying to communicate and they understand the importance of that word and I celebrate it with them whenever I hear no matter how it's stated or how it's pronounced. Well, we're back again. My name is Nathan Wright and I'm the Executive Director of the Etiquette Foundation of Illinois and I am so pleased to be here today with you to cover this awesome subject. Today we're going to talk about parenting. Remember this whole concept we have called etiquette-centered parenting. Now, I want you to remember that, kind of lock that into your mind, etiquette-centered. This is a new way of parenting. Your whole concept, your philosophy on parenting should be, we recommend that it's centered around the subject of etiquette. So it's etiquette-centered parenting. And when that becomes your primary focus as you educate your child to be a decent, warm, caring, kind, considerate, just an awesome human being with great character, great ethics, and great morals, all the things that will make that child the greatest human being that ever walked the planet Earth. That's your goal as a parent, to do that. This is serious business, this thing called parenting. And we want to make this such a subject that our parents will, will accept its importance and begin to integrate this concept into the intellectual parenting skills. And so this is what we want to do because we have some serious, serious problems in our society today. I'm sad to say some very, very serious problems. And I believe, personally, and the Etiquette Foundation believe that this thing called etiquette educating can make all the difference, total difference, because it's a value system. And when your values are who you are and, they, and those values represent you, you need not worry about doing some things that are degenerate, that are illegal, that are unethical. You don't have to worry about those because that's not a part of your values. And when you're challenged to do something unethical, you say no. You just will not do it. Your character, your personality, your humanity will not allow you to do that. I don't care if they got a gun to your head. You just will not do it. So, this is the kind of human beings that we want to produce in this society. Now just think about it. You go back 50 years. That was a time when I was a child that we didn't lock our doors. We didn't have bars on our windows. We didn't have to worry about someone breaking and entering. We didn't have to worry about being accosted on the street. Because we were a community, and we valued each other. Whatever happened to that concept, where you can go and into your house and not have the door locked? Now the house is all prisons. They have bars like a jail in the front door. The bars are all around the windows. Everybody's operating in fear. What have we become as a civilization? where we have to be afraid every time we walk out of our homes or that we feel we got to have securities and alarms on our cars. What is this about? What has happened? We're supposed to be progressing as a society. We're supposed to be getting better as human beings. Isn't this, isn't this what civilization is? But look at it now. Everybody has to carry a gun. But they call it concealed carry. To feel safe. What has happened to us as human beings? And I can tell you that etiquette is a key part of that. 
That's what's missing, those values that make up this thing called etiquette. And that's a key part of civilization. We are coming together to make it better for one another. We are coming together to support each other. That's what civilization is. But what happened? What went wrong up here? Who is encouraging us to do these unethical things that we are going through? I went on my computer, computer today just doing some research. And do you know when Chicago's black population hit its all-time high? Okay, over 800 and some thousand African Americans in Chicago. It was only 130 murders at that year. 130. Today our population is dwindled. Okay, dwindled. Down to under 500,000. And the murder rate is 670. What is going on? Have we lost our minds? And so we believe that this thing called etiquette is critical. And so we're encouraging parents and mentors to consider incorporating this into their value system and begin to teach it to their children. So we're going to cover a few things we went over the last couple of shows on etiquette-centered parenting. Just to refresh you on how we, have, we are approaching this subject and what uh, we believe is so important. So I'm going to start with this first overhead here. Etiquette-centered parenting is a 20-year program in teaching social values. Okay? We said 20 years simply because from the birth of your child to the time your child becomes an adult is about a 20-year process, maybe 25 today. But it's at least 20 years. Okay? So you want to have in your program as a parent social values, moral values. You need to teach this every day. And it should be taught in your local school. I mean, when you think about it, we send our children to school for 13 years, from kindergarten to 12th grade. 13 years. They don't need to study math for 12 years? For what they need to use math for? They should be able to learn enough math in the first five years. Okay? They don't need to study science for the next eight years, unless they want to be a scientist or an engineer. I think our children should decide what their profession is going to be or what they favor by the time they're in the fifth grade. Their academic scores should show what they have a propensity towards. And if they seem to be high in math, then give them some accelerated courses in math. Okay? But basically in the first five years, you can Learn to balance a checkbook if they have checkbooks 20 years from now. You can learn to count your money when you get your change at the store. So you don't need all of these other subjects, but you do need to teach them etiquette in schools. That need to be taught for the next 12 years. There's a way to solve the homicide rate in Chicago. We can educate our children away from those kinds of deviant, unethical behaviors and values. No child is born to be a killer. You can't tell me that little toddler over there is going to grow up and kill somebody. He may very well do that, but he's a toddler now. He's three years old, and you can't tell me that he may end up being a killer because he very well may be that. But my point is that he is educated to become a killer. And it starts with this value system that leads him to putting a gun in his hand and taking someone's life. So what happened to his parents? Where did they drop the ball? Because the killer has a mother. The killer has a father. The victim has a mother and the victim has a father. So what happened to the killer who shot this individual to death? What happened 
to him over those last last 10, 15, 20 years? Where was, where was his parents? His mother and his father. And what did they teach him or not teach him that it permitted him to become a, a young man with a gun in his hand and taking the life of another individual? It is so, so tragic. We're at we're going to have 700 homicides in Chicago before the end of the year. Something has gone wrong in this society. Terribly wrong. We can educate our children to be decent human beings. 99% of them. If in 1967 we have 130, 140 homicides, we can get back to that. It's a matter of the kind of values you're teaching your child. And yes, parents, this is a serious, serious job. 20 years, you have to be very, very serious in teaching your child these basic values. Let me move on to one of our other subjects on this parenting that we covered over the last two or three weeks. What we've been doing is going back and forth from mentoring to parenting. And we think these two are, is at the foundation of humanity. I have a mother and I have a father. And you have a mother and you have a father. Now if your mother and father do their job, you won't become a killer. That's just that simple. So we need to make sure that we are educating our mothers and fathers to the responsibility they have to their child. Because we all lose. The child that grows up and has a gun in his hand and kills another child, those parents are agonizing over the loss of their child. The child with the gun is locked up for the rest of his life. So we're all losers. See, so we parents have to make sure we do everything to guard against our child, especially if it's a boy, growing up to put a gun in his hand and killing someone else's child. Okay? So the next one here is Etiquette Center Parenting is carefully screening the children you allow your child to associate with and have a serious conversation with the parents of the children you approve of. If you want to do your job, parents, you have to make sure that you have some control over who your child associates with. Because you don't know what's going on in that household, what is going into your child's head, what is influencing your child via his, his association with this other child. So you have to make sure that you are evaluating these individuals, individuals and having a conversation with their parents. Because you don't want your child influenced in the wrong ways. Okay? And it's just that simple. Now, in my day, it was a lot, lot simpler, naturally. Today, you have, you're living in a prison but all the wrong things are coming into your house like the doors are all open. All of the values your child is getting is coming in. And even though you're living in a barred up jail, you are not concerned about what is coming into your house through the way, airways, through the television, through the computer. Those is where they're getting into your child's head coming in that way. You have to monitor that. You have to be extremely careful. Those cartoons you letting your child sit there and watch, let them have a lot of negative things incorporated into them. A lot of violence is involved in them. They're made to look like they're comical. But you as a parent, you have to protect what your child is exposed to. So you have to monitor those things that's coming into your home through those other mediums that are there to not be your child's friend, okay? They're there to influence your child in a way that's very antisocial. Those video games, oh my God, 
When did we get into that mindset that we can buy these things for our children and buy these violent games and let them play with them as though it's fun? I mean, it's, what is fun about killing some other people? Even though they animated. But anyway, I have a caller. Caller, you on the air? Yes, sir. Great show. Thank you, sir. You know, you, you know when you're born, you have a 50 50 chance of going bad or good. Okay? Yes. But if you don't have, but if you don't have any loving or pride or respect, how are you going to have any etiquette? You have your parents halfway down your behind. Yes. You got these people calling bees and hoes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and and you got the girls all tattooed up. So, what are, what are they going to learn? Any? Did she speak up a little bit, caller? Okay. You know what? What are, the girls all have tattoos. So what are they going to? Uh, what what do they know about etiquette? When I was growing up. Listen, let me tell you. Yes. There was nothing but pride and respect for everybody around you. Teachers, whoever it was. Now, no young boys and girls, teacher men and women, don't know anything about etiquette. And, and the bad part of the yeah, and the bad part about it is they don't care you. Right. They just don't care. They want to go out there, do their stuff. And when they end up in jail or on death row or in prison, who do they blame? Oh, they blame the, the judicial system. The judicial system is, is against them. Right. Uh, uh, African Americans and Hispanics. Oh, no. <laughs> Not the judicial system. You're against yourself. Yes. Oh, that's not right to do. We never had thoughts of that. When I was growing up, I was 59 years old. I grew up in this beautiful city. Right. I hope, I hope it gets beautiful again one day, and then I can enjoy it like I used to. Yes. Sir, keep up the good work. Thank you. I'll Thank you. Know. You're absolutely right. Okay. Thank yes. You. Yes. Thank you for calling, caller. Great commentary there. We're two generations apart from that reality he's talking about. Just two generations. Well, you're talking about thousands of generations behind us. These values didn't come out overnight. But we were allowed the media and the people who were trying to influence us to eliminate these words from the language. You rarely hear that word spoken on any of those programs you're watching on TV. Rarely. It's not even mentioned in the schools. They don't even have an etiquette book in the school library. And this is the most fundamental subject of all of humanity. Behavior. Civilized behavior. And it's not even taught in the schools. What is wrong with us? I mean, these doctors and these educators talking about they educating my child, but they're not teaching him the most important subject of all. This is why we have 670 homicides in Chicago and 3,000 shootings. And this weekend is going to be another six, seven, eight, ten people shot to death. They're going to be gone. We are going insane. This is what's going on right in front of our eyes. There's no excuse for this kind of violence in the so-called free society, in the so-called greatest democracy on the planet. Where, where, where is that so-called democracy at in Chicago? Okay, so what is missing? It's an educational problem. We are educating our children to do these degenerate things. They didn't just pop into their head by accident. They got there some kind of way. They got demoralized some kind of way. Okay, so this is a great subject here. I want to encourage our parents to think about who they allow their child to associate with. Now I'm going to move on to the next one here. These are some subjects on etiquette-centered parenting we have covered in the past. 
I just want to remind our listeners and viewers of uh, what those subjects is. Okay? This one here is Etiquette Center Parenting. Is it carefully eva is carefully evaluating your child's dietary and nutritional requirements during the first 20 years. Your goal is to prepare your child to live a healthy and active life for the next 60 years. Okay? So that's important. What you're feeding sugar and all these other and snacks and junk you allowing your child to put into their system. You're preparing them for cancer and all kind of other diseases when they get 50 and 60. And yes, our young men are dying at an early age from being fed these different poisonings that is not conducive to eating. But we're just feeding it to our children because they like it. And you don't read on the label what's in the food that you're feeding them. Okay? Moving on to this next one here because our time is running out. <clears throat> okay? And I think we covered this one here. Okay, let's look at this one here and uh, read that one to you. Etiquette Center Parenting is placing less focus on fun and games but more on securing their financial well-being in their adult lives. You want your child to be able to take care of themselves, to be self-sufficient, so they don't have to depend on the government or on you to help support them. So that's one of your major responsibilities as a parent. Make sure they have all of the necessary education they're going to need to be self-sufficient. That means you're going to have to help them look out into the world 15, 20 years from now to see what, what profession is going to be a sustaining it profession. You have the life and the wisdom to look out 20 years and say, I don't know about that profession there. It seems like it's going down. And there's no more need for that because technology has eliminated it. So, my dear, you need to focus on this, edu this side of the educational equation because there seem to be long-term employment in that area, okay? So those are the kinds of things you need to assist your child when in the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade because you need to start thinking about that and have them thinking about it so that they'll know what they need to do educational-wise to be able to be self-sustaining, okay? <clears throat> All right, moving on real quickly. Got a few minutes left. Uh, Etiquette Center Parenting is a monumental undertaking requiring an un unprecedented commitment to the social, moral, and intellectual upbringing of your offspring. Now that was a mouthful. That was a mouthful. But you have to take it just that serious. You have to take it absolutely that serious. Because at the end of the day, much of what you educate your child to do or not to do is going to have a lot to do with what they do in their adult lives. And this goes on generation after generation after generation. It's not just his or her life. It's going to affect their children. Your grandchildren are going to be impacted about how you raise your child today. So we need to get in the business of educating our children because we need to think two, three, four generations out. And what we have at the Etiquette Foundation, a list of rules to educate your child. And just, just go to our website and we'll send this to you. This is a weekly program, Etiquette Parent Child In-Home Etiquette Literacy Training Program. Just go to our website and... Send us an email. I'm going to give you the information. Send us an email, and I will mail this to you, or I will email it to you at no charge. And the only thing you have to do is spend 10, 15 minutes a day. In the morning when your child leaves, before they leave the home, and when they return. It's a simple program. Every day counts. You need to continue to educate your child like you're sending them to school, to be educated for 12, 13 years, you need to do your in-home educating 
you and your significant other, you, whomever that may be, so that your child will get this education. Call us at 312-473-2942. Our webpage is www.efoi.org. And if you want to email us, send us at ef, uh, info at efoi.org. Please, this is free information, and we want you to have it because this is a business that we certainly are committed to, and we at the Etiquette Foundation of Illinois want to make sure that you get this information. Okay? Well, that seems to be about it. I really enjoyed the show this evening. Hope you got something out of it. Thank you, Carla, for calling in. We certainly appreciate it. And until next Wednesday, which we'll be talking about etiquette center mentoring again, have a good evening and a wonderful weekend.